Hey guys, it's Zach, so Tesla. I know Tesla's a polarizing brand. You either love them or you hate them, but opinions aside, they do make a great battery system. However, because of these controversial opinions on Tesla, I'm starting to see a gap in the market that I feel like other manufacturers can take advantage of. And with Franklin releasing their new A-Power 2 battery, let's see how it stacks up against the current standard in the industry today, the Tesla Powerwall 3. Now, some of you may know a bit about Franklin's first generation battery. The standout improvements of the second generation battery are an increase in capacity, increase in warranty, and a big bump in both the continuous and peak power output. But is it gonna be enough to top Tesla? Let's find out. Let's cover five sections of information that you need to know before making a decision. And yes, as always, we will talk about pricing. All right, let's start with the key specs, capacity, power output, warranty, and battery chemistry. When it comes to energy capacity, Tesla Powerwall 3, 13.5 kilowatt hours, Franklin A Power 2, 15 kilowatt hours. And remember, energy capacity is measured here in kilowatt hours. And think of this as the equivalent to your fuel tank size in your car. How many gallons of gasoline can it hold? How far can you drive? Next, you have your power output. Powerwall 3 can output 11.5 kW continuous. Franklin has upgraded the offer here and doubled their power output from the 5 kW that we saw in the original A Power to now 10 kW continuous in the A Power 2. Power output is measured here in kilowatts, not kilowatt hours. And think of this as your battery's horsepower. The more power output, the heavier of an electrical load your battery can support, like AC units, EV chargers, and so on. The peak startup for both options can also support a five-ton AC unit here, so there's plenty of output to back up most single-family homes, depending on your electrical demand, of course. As for battery warranty, Tesla's at 10 years with 70% energy retention. Franklin raises the bar with 15 years in that same 70% energy retention. And then battery cell chemistry, both Powerwall 3 and A Power 2 are using LFP, or lithium iron phosphate, which has become the chemistry of choice primarily due to its safety and overall durability and longevity when it comes to day-to-day -day cycling. Now let's shift into section two, battery architecture. And this is where the two options will differ quite a bit. Tesla operates primarily as a DC coupled design. And then Franklin exclusively operates as an AC coupled design. We have talked about this a bit before here on the channel, but if you are new, welcome. My name is Zach. Here we talk about solar batteries, and do reviews like this. If that's content that you typically enjoy, do me a huge favor, hit the subscribe button. If you are in the market for solar and a battery system and you'd like a book a call with me to see if it makes sense and take a look at some numbers, click the link at the top of the description below. It's free, takes 15 minutes, and I will be as transparent as possible to make things simple. I work direct in Arizona, Texas, and Nevada, but I also have partners I trust all over the US who use both Tesla and Franklin. Now back to AC coupled and DC coupled batteries. It's not super important to know, but if you wanna learn the complete difference between the two, I have a video I put together discussing this topic exactly. For now, I'm gonna give you the short oversimplified version. For these options, DC coupled means it has an inverter built into the battery system to serve as the solar and the battery's inverter. And the battery is directly fed by the solar panel's DC power, hence the name DC coupled. Tesla, Point Guard, Solar Edge, and Canadian Solar's EP Cube are the most popular versions of a DC coupled design. AC coupled means the battery pairs with a third party or separate solar inverter and is directly fed by the inverter's AC power. Franklin, Enphase, and ironically Tesla are the most popular AC coupled battery options today. Powerwall 3 can operate either as DC coupled or AC coupled with DC being preferred on new installations and AC coupled being ideal in retrofit installations. This flexibility is an advantage of Tesla's. Now Tesla specifically has that mentioned built-in hybrid inverter inside the same assembly as the battery and that's operating as the entire system's inverter. So it makes for a more efficient design, smaller system footprint, and for the money, it's more cost effective since you have one inverter serving two purposes. Now to clarify, Franklin also has an inverter inside their battery. However, this inverter only serves as the inverter to the battery, not the solar. It's a one-way inverter. What this means is that you will need to pair any third-party inverter system to Franklin's setup with Enphase's microinverters currently as the most common option on new installations. The upside here is more system flexibility and options, but 
does come at a cost since you will have to purchase more components and it will make for a more labor intense installation. So with these two different options, one's not better and this likely won't be the exact variable that determines which battery you select. It's just a part of understanding the different systems as a whole. Now let's talk about section three, software and ecosystems. Starting with software, both Tesla and Franklin offer demo versions of their apps. So you can go in, test them out as if you had a system right now. And I highly encourage that so you can get a firsthand experience, see how it feels and see which one you might like better. With today's battery systems, they're software based. So that software is everything since that's how you interact with the system and it can really determine the quality of your experience. Franklin recently got a facelift, so it now looks very similar to Tesla from the power flow on the home screen, the energy graphs, operating modes, and so on. I have a Tesla system myself, and I sell a lot of the Tesla products, so candidly, I'm biased because it's familiar to me, I know it works, and it's something I trust. To that note, I will say that Tesla software is overly simplistic to some, which is why a third-party app like Net Zero is so helpful. I've created a bunch of different videos on Tesla software, so if you wanna learn more on that specifically, check out those videos. Now, Franklin software still offers a really good look and offers a bit more customization overall. These points of customization are things we will cover here shortly. I do think at the end of the day, it's gonna come down to user preference like Apple versus Samsung. So go ahead, use those demo apps and decide for yourself. Now, Tesla's ecosystem is great and gets even better if you're all in on Tesla and you either have their vehicles or plan to have their vehicles. Sidebar, if you do drive a Tesla vehicle, I'm gonna recommend that you check out Joa. They were nice enough to support the channel and send out a couple accessories like their wireless MagSafe charger and portable air compressor. Everything I received was really high quality and has worked flawlessly over the past few months. And if you do order through them, use code Zach5 or the link below for 5% off. I do also receive 5% commission on anything you purchase, so thank you in advance. Now back to Tesla, your Powerwall system and vehicles will all communicate from the same Tesla app, as well as if you get a Tesla EV charger. In fact, if you get the Tesla Universal Wall connector, which is their EV charger. It will work with both Tesla and non-Tesla vehicles for charging. So all of that information will show up in your app like shown. You can also view your vehicle's charge stats, power flow, utilize the charge on solar feature, and eventually, hopefully, fingers crossed, power share as that rolls out to more vehicles than just the Cybertruck. And if you live in an area that offers Tesla Electric or Tesla VPP, these could all be points towards opting for a Powerwall system. Now, Franklin, they offer a much more open ecosystem. Good example of that would be the direct generator integration. While this is a pretty niche feature that most people really don't need, Franklin, unlike Tesla, offers the ability for the battery to be recharged by a generator system in the event of a prolonged outage, whereas the power wall can only be recharged by the solar panels. This is especially helpful in areas that may experience snowstorms as snow covered solar panels may not be particularly helpful during a prolonged outage. From my understanding, this can be any 240 volt generator, whether it's standby or portable. In addition to that generator integration, Franklin also offers smart circuits, which within their A gate, which is their system gateway, you can have up to three of your loads be on a smart circuit. This is like a mini span panel or a smart panel built into the system, which is pretty cool to have. What this means is you can control those circuits in the app directly and take advantage of time of use plans or shed that load during a grid outage. These features do continue to expand the cost, but allow for more customization as you see fit. Oh, and one small fun feature they do offer is you can customize the color of that front LED strip in the app directly. Moving into section four, installation and appearance. The labor component is such a big part of the overall battery installation. The more parts and labor required generally makes for a more industrial installation with more equipment on your wall, but that also means it takes more time, which drives up that labor cost. So all of these things are correlated. And when it comes to a battery installation, you're gonna have your main panel, then a system gateway of some kind, which will act as your battery's transfer switch in the event of a grid outage. Then depending on your setup, you will have a critical loads panel, which is all the breakers that you want backed up during an outage. And lastly, your battery and your inverter system. Powerwall 3 can be installed with its gateway system, their gateway three, or their backup switch, which we'll talk about here in a bit. When installed with their gateway, you'd have your main panel, then the gateway three, potentially that critical loads panel, and then the Powerwall 3, which is your inverter and your battery all in one. It's a pretty straightforward process. 
three total boxes, plus the disconnects, which I would consider a more traditional battery install. And Franklin's installation process is gonna be pretty similar to this. With the A Power 2, you're gonna have your main panel, your gateway system, which is their A gate. Then if you need it, that critical loads panel. And then of course, the A Power 2 battery and your inverter system of choice. This install is also pretty straightforward. It's nothing too crazy, it's just time consuming. And we do go from three total boxes to four total boxes now that we add that separate inverter system. However, for Powerwall 3, their X Factor is without a doubt their backup switch. It really has revolutionized the entire installation process. The backup switch is a meter collar, which replaces the Gateway 3 and now acts as your home's transfer switch in the event of a grid outage. The benefits of a backup switch installation are simple. Significant cost reduction, usually several thousands of dollars since it's an easier installation, there's less parts, less material, time, labor, all of that. It's not just two less boxes to install and wire up, but it also means that we can use your home's existing electrical panel as is, rather than needing to install that new critical loads panel for your backed up circuits. In most cases, we're looking at cutting it down from a two to three day installation with a dedicated battery crew to just a one day installation with the same crew that was installing your solar panels. The downside of the backup switch is not all utilities have approved of it and it can't be used in all situations. I will link the list of utilities that are currently approved to use the backup switch below. If you are in one of the backup switch approved utilities, it will make for a hard argument against Tesla when cost is consider. Right now in Arizona and California, which by the way are both states I can get you a free quote in, click the link below, most of the major utilities have approved of this backup switch, which has just caused Tesla to dominate the market. Installers love it. You just pop the meter out, install the backup switch, run the communications wire, and boom, you're done. I'd say it's impossible to beat the footprint and aesthetics of a Powerwall 3 installation with that backup switch. It's just really clean looking and it's only gonna take up two feet of horizontal wall space. And if you are enjoying the video so far, do me a huge favor and drop a like on the video and subscribe to the channel if you have not already. I always appreciate all the support from you guys. So let's wrap this video up with section five, pricing. Now, as always, when I talk about pricing in my videos, there are a few things to remember. All of these numbers are projected cost ranges based on a single battery, fully installed. These numbers are before your 30% federal tax credit and do not represent one single quote or install. For Powerwall 3, you can expect the cost to fall in the $10,000 to $18,000 range, which I know is a huge spread due to the different variables. So let's break it down further. When it's paired with a new solar installation, if your Powerwall 3 is using the backup switch, you should expect the cost to be on the low end of this range. Whereas if it's a traditional install with the Gateway 3 and a critical loads panel, that's likely going to fall in the middle part of this range. If you are looking at a system as a retrofit installation on an existing solar setup, expect your quote to be in the middle to upper end or possibly even over this mark. On a Franklin A Power 2 installation, you can expect the cost to fall in that $14,000 to $20,000 plus range. Again, I know it's a wide range, so let's narrow it down. If your battery is being paired to a new solar installation, you can expect the cost point to land in the middle to lower end of the range. If you are adding a Franklin battery to an existing system as a retrofit install, prepare yourself because you likely will be on the upper end of this range, especially if you're in a higher cost of labor market like Northern California. You are paying more for Franklin in most cases, but you also have to remember you're getting more kilowatt hours of total capacity and a longer warranty. Again, this is all a ballpark as every situation and installer might be unique, but hopefully this can help give you a range of cost points to expect. And when comparing these two different battery options, you might start to wonder if you should consider micro inverters or just stick with Tesla's integrated string inverter. So check out this video here on the screen where we compare both of these options and see which one might make more sense for you. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe for more and we'll talk next time.